Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we are back again with Dr. Dan Columbus, a research scientist at Perry Swine Center. So Dan, I'm going to skip a little bit of the typical introduction and background stuff that we do, partly because you've been on the show several times and also partly because it, one of them was just recently. Um, so I'm going to jump right into the topic so we have a little bit more time to discuss that. Um, so I read the studies that you sent on characterizing the differences between low and normal birth weight pigs. So I guess what all did you discover in those series of studies? And was it mainly just nutritional deficiencies or was there a bit more to the story? Yeah, so I guess a little bit of background in the, into the studies first, because we know that you know low birth weight with these high prolific prolific sows are is becoming more and more of a problem, right? Just in general, um, and we wanted to tease apart how much of the difference is due to the fact that they're low birth weight versus the fact that you know people think that they might just not be competitive for resources, mainly you know. Sow's milk intake and, and maybe even later on. Surprisingly, I guess in a way, we found that nutrition had very little impact, right? So average daily gain of the pigs and, and everything obviously was was lower if you don't feed them. Um, but the other aspects that we looked at didn't really respond to the intake and it was more of an effect of low birth weight. So uh, specifically, we looked at digestive function where we looked at enzyme and transporter abundance that was lower in low birth weight pigs. Uh, we saw decreased cerebrovascular uh, function because we're working with uh, some human health people as well. Um, that was reduced with low birth weight, but not nutrition. Um, we specifically looked at um, uh, the, the only one, I guess, that, that had both of a factor was cardiac health uh, when we specifically looked at cardiac function. So that had a low birth weight and a feed intake. But interestingly, the feed intake one was only negative when they were restricted. And then once they got back to refeeding, then that negative effect went away. So low birth weight seems to be the only kind of constant from from at least birth to to the end of nursery, uh, and, and I think it really shows that these pigs are different. Um, the other one that I should uh, point out too, because this is most interesting, I guess, from a nutrition standpoint, is that these pigs, uh, low birth weight pigs, seem to um, be. Um, deficient in certain like energy systems or, or um, gluconeogenesis and fatty acid utilization and stuff like that. Um, so I guess just to follow up on that last part, do you think that could have an effect on um, the results of the study in intestinal development as well? Yeah, I, 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 we didn't look at it specifically, like you said, but I think there's been lots of work out there that kind of show at least the importance of colostrum intake in general. Right. So if they are going to be a little bit weaker, they're not getting there in time, uh, you know, that can have that that negative effect. Um, we really wanted to see like what happens afterwards and really look at that physiology um, of them, too. Right. Do they respond to nutrients the same way? I, I think it would actually be really interesting to see, you know, if they get the same amount of colostrum as a normal birth weight, is that response the same? Right, because the evidence that we're getting with this series of of analyses and with this characterization study is that you know the the pig is fundamentally different. It's not just that they're small or they're weak; they they don't respond the same way. So it, it would be interesting to see you know what is that response to colostrum specifically. Gotcha. So I know you didn't necessarily look at any um, economics in the study. Um, but just from a general perspective, how much do you believe the loss from these low birth weight pigs can impact the swine industry? And then to follow with that is, and I know this one as well, is um, definitely going to have to be answered with some generalization because this is not something that you or anyone necessarily has uh, the perfect answer for. Uh, but what do you think would be some of the next steps that need to be taken in trying to help better um, assist these low birth weight pigs? Yeah. Economics is a tricky one because there's so many factors that go into whether uh, something is going to be economic <laughs> uh, in order to do, right? There's been a lot of work of like, it, just in general with increased litter size and the amount of labor that's required in order to take care of these litters that are generally all smaller than they used to be. 
uh, with cross fostering and split suckling and all those other factors that you do, right? I think there's been some work that's been done to say if you need, if you have to have, say, 24 hour labor, then you need to be saving 2.3 pigs or something like that per litter, right? So I think the mortality aside, I think the issue is whether or not knowing that these pigs are small, they're not going to grow as efficiently and eat more. Can your production handle that, right? Keeping them longer or marketing them lighter. That's not a number I can tell you, right? That's going to be dependent on your own uh, facility and, and what you can do, you know, but I think we really need to start looking at it, you know, and this is controversial, but it's like, if are bigger litters really saving us and making us more profitable or should we go to maybe smaller litters with more robust pigs? Um, so I'll just put that out there. I know nobody's going to like that. Uh, but if we're going to continue, which we probably will, right? The next steps for us is specifically looking at the results that we're, we're seeing and look then at targets. So what can we specifically do, say, in the feed or in the management to help these pigs? And, you know, it might be looking at the energy type or, or you know, what we're putting in the diet to help with that, that deficiency in energy utilization. It might be looking at, you know, what do we have to do to account for the decrease in digestive uh, capacity and everything in those pigs, right? Instead of just assuming that they just need more feed. So that's really what we're going to start to look at. You know what are some of the the key things that we can look at instead of just trying to to pump more into them and yeah that brings up another point um and this point might not be something that many people like to discuss because it's a little it's a little bit of the the darker side i guess you could say of the swine industry but when we're talking about these low birth weight pigs and we're talking about economic profitability you have to discuss if we're if we're able to identify these low birth weight pigs at what point do we say it's no longer um, in the pig's best interest or from an economic perspective um, and, ec and economically our best interest to keep these pigs around and then we should then humanely euthanize them? Is that at weaning? Is that at birth, like this study, when you first identify them? Is that after the nursery, after you give them a shot? Um, I think helping define that line and figuring out where that line is can help a lot of producers maybe increase their uh, profit margin now given there isn't going to be a set a, a set day or a set time for every farm it's going to vary considerably on management practices and many other factors within the farm but trying to identify those pigs and pick the appropriate time i think could very much help um, farmers increase their profit margin over time yeah, I think it ties back to your your economics question, right? Like it, it's going to depend on the specific situation. I, I think you kind of have to assume that at this stage, like I said, that pig is going to grow small, grow, grow slower, and and not be as good as the other one. So mortality aside, right? Um, can can your your facility handle slower growing pigs that are not going to get up there? Um, and I will. I guess I'll take the opportunity to kind of specify that when we're talking about low birth weight, it's kind of like that 0.8 to 1.2 kilo part, right? We're not talking about the very low birth weight, low, you know, low viability piglets, the runs that, you know, that's not what we're talking about. So those ones, obviously, you're probably going to get rid of them right away, right? They're not, they're not, not really worth trying to keep to keep. So it is those ones that it's like, you know, they will grow, they'll be fine as long as they don't die. Can you um, can, can you handle keeping them around longer or, you know, a little bit less feed efficiency? And again, I think it's hard to answer those questions because it's all going to be dependent on what your, your individual uh, unit, unit is doing, right? Yep, exactly. Well, Dan, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again for coming on the show and sharing all this with us. Yeah, thanks. It's always good to be on. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, 
feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.